talking about what you kind of just heard, the reality looming over a lot of Oregon renters who are having a hard time making ends meet right now. For most of 2020, local and state governments have put moratoriums on evictions, and that's really saved a lot of people from essentially not having a place to live. And experts have warned, though, if it expires, before people get back to work and start making some money again, tens of thousands of Oregonians could lose their homes. Here's what one advocate told our Maggie Vespa this week about the statistics they're seeing right here in Oregon. And the stout research is the one that we tend to look to the most. They have been doing updates of their data every two weeks. And they say between, um, I believe it's 25,000 to 57,000 folks, households, may be at risk of eviction on January 1st. 57,000 households, 57,000. 25,000 on the low end, like that's, the, that's the, the good looking scenario. And they're unfathomable numbers. To put that into perspective, the, federal, the last federal count from January of 2019 showed nearly 16,000 people were homeless in Oregon. And, and we know what that situation has done to this state. So this new estimate, estimate in the worst case scenario could more than quadruple that if it expires. And that's, that's amazing to even think about. But again, that is a big, that's a big if. And right now we want to talk about the things that are being done to try and stop that from happening, at least in the short term. First, this morning, Multnomah County Commissioners, they threw out a major lifeline for Portland renters. They extended the county's eviction moratorium. So Multnomah County renters now have until January of 2022 to pay back all of the rent that they owe. That's a full year. But again, that's only specific to Multnomah County. So you might be wondering to yourself right now, yeah, what if I live anywhere else in the entire state of Oregon. Well, that brings us to our big story. Because if you live anywhere outside of Multnomah County, well, that extension simply just does not apply to you. And Oregon's eviction moratorium will expire on January 1st. That's the plan, in which case you now have two hopes. One, next week's special session in Salem. Lawmakers could extend the statewide eviction moratorium by six months. That's the talk right now, which would take us to the middle of 2021. They're also considering paying landlords who are also hurting badly during all of this as much as 80% of what they are owed in unpaid rent. In fact, leaders are hearing public comments on this very plan as we speak doing this show live right now. It's happening this very second in Salem. Number two, Congress, okay, could pass a second federal relief package. And the word is they're actually pretty close to doing this. And this bill could include another round of modest stimulus checks, along with relief funding for people who need to make ends meet right now. And while hope is a great thing, we all need hope, neither of these relief packages are a guarantee. Not yet, anyway. The special session could very well flop. We've seen that happen with Oregon legislative sessions in the past. And we don't need to remind you that Congress is often hopelessly gridlocked. So, all that in mind, we thought it was important to put faces to the needs we're talking about and meet some of the people who need our leaders to come through. Maggie Vespa met some of them. I mean, we're, we're a few weeks away from, you know, probably one of the worst realities of our lifetime. One of the worst realities of our lifetime in an already gutting year. The work in the restaurants stop, families with kids without food and no money for the rent. Tens of thousands of Oregon renters worry 2020's final blow will be homelessness. It breaks you down like you cry. You're like, you think about it and you look at you know, little faces and they don't understand and you're doing everything you can. This week, three runners told KGW their stories. I mean, Taylor's cried about it numerous times. Ryan Bowser, his girlfriend Taylor and her daughter are all on the brink of being evicted from their Corvallis apartment. Ryan and Taylor both clean classrooms at Oregon State University, but off and on throughout the pandemic, child care needs have forced at least one of them to stay home and forfeit and, a paycheck. Uh, you know, we, we pay about 11.65 a month. Um, it, I think, varies a little bit based on utilities, but right now we're three months rent uh, back. Three months back, and he just learned his girlfriend is pregnant. We're kind of still processing that uh, while still trying to I guess, process the possibility of being homeless in a couple of weeks. So. Bowser is going yeah, public with his fears uh, because he thinks think unemployment a, stats don't tell the whole story. There, uh, there's an underrepresented amount of people, I think, uh, who kind of slipped in the crack, slipped through the cracks in the pandemic so far. 
because you have the unemployed who are mostly covered by the um, unemployment bolster of $600 a week, which was great for people. And I'm really happy that happened for them. But then you had folks like me and, and it's not j obviously just me who um, they, they didn't lose all of their income, but they lost enough of it to where making ends meet was, was impossible. This community is a, is a, como community pobre, comunidad pobre? Very low income. It's very low income. Working as a seamstress, Malaysia Torres is the main breadwinner for her family of six. They live in a trailer in northeast Portland's Coley neighborhood. For now, she has the most protection of the three runners we talked to by virtue of where she lives. Thursday morning, Multnomah County commissioners voted to extend their eviction moratorium, giving runners until January 2022 to catch up on back rent. Torres has been able to get some help covering rent through COVID relief funding dispensed by the county. But all this aid is shaky. And she argues Oregon's politicians don't realize people of color disproportionately live on the brink of homelessness. They need help us to uh, need see the, my, my, my form of life, my style of life. My way of life. My, my way of life. Uh huh. In all, advocates estimate anywhere between 25,000 to nearly 57,000 Oregon households are at risk for eviction come January 1st. That is, unless state lawmakers extend Oregon's moratorium on evictions. It's on the table of bills to consider during the special session in Salem next week. I feel like they're hopefully not, not going to just give us all the boot. Bethany uh, Anderson of Polk County, Oregon is afraid to bank on you know, it. I don't take for granted the fact that January 1, they can put an eviction notice on my door if I don't have that rent that's past due paid. Anderson is a new mom to 10-month-old Kane. She lost a job in the beginning of the pandemic and hasn't been able to get work since. Her husband works in tech and the family loves their two-bedroom apartment. It is really nice, um, $1,000 a month. Um, and then we're currently only behind 4,000. Like all three we talked to, Anderson knows she's one of many behind on rent. She actually considers her family lucky. There's, there's people who are behind so much in rent that it's like you look at it and that's not even a mountain. That's like 20 mountains. How are you going to climb that? So she, like Bowser and Torres, is hoping politicians will make the climb easier. Anderson will be watching the special session eagerly. If it fails and she's evicted, she's decided. The family will just physically refuse to leave. I'm not going to go in the middle of winter and sleep in my car with a baby. And I figure that if there's this many people that that are struggling and there's this many people that face this i don't feel like they're gonna send that many sheriffs out to one by one put everybody out of their door i mean there's got to be human compassion somewhere because right now i don't know it just you need something and not a lot of us have money anymore <laughs> Okay, Maggie Vespa joining us now. Now, Maggie, before we get into the, the politics and the policies and all, all that stuff, let's talk a little bit about these renters who shared their stories with us because they were pretty personal. Can you explain a little bit how you got connected with them? Yeah, definitely. We always want to kind of pull back the curtain on that. So essentially in every way possible. I mean, we posted on social media in groups for um, unemployment benefits and support in that way, in groups for um, eviction protection. And then we went through nonprofits that work with people and help get housing relief funding to them. We went through county housing departments. Um, but really it's worth saying, each of our renters came forward and volunteered to talk. And a lot of them have thought about doing so because this special session is approaching and they and they want to get their stories heard and we should also point out they know this is not just an organ problem this is a national problem and one stat uh, estimates between 2.4 million and 5 million american households could be facing eviction next month as wow. moratoriums like this run out across the country so this is huge yeah so um so a very timely special session to, to discuss this and you know we we spend a lot of time talking about renters but this is also going to deal with landlords and, you know, they're owed a lot of money right now, money they use to pay the mortgage or pay taxes or upkeep on the home, things like that. What, what's the conversation going to be like uh, when it comes to landlords? 
It's a huge conversation as well. I mean, as you pointed out, so in the special session, we talked about, you talked about that eviction moratorium bill. And a big part of that is that some state lawmakers want to put forward um, a bill that basically would set up a fund where the state can pay up to 80% of what landlords in Oregon are owed right now, as long as those landlords then forgive the debts of their tenants. There has been some pushback because some state lawmakers say that the fund that the state would pull that from, that they wouldn't have enough money to cover all landlords. And then others have said, it seems like a really nice idea in theory, but they don't think the bill is kind of thought through well enough. That said, you know, the deadline is here and this moratorium ends with the year and the special session is happening Monday. So they don't have a lot of time to kind of work this out. We do though want to dive more into that. So we're going to do kind of a part two on this story here on the story tomorrow night and really look at the plight of landlords here in Oregon and those bills and those efforts to give them some help as well. So that's tomorrow night. Yeah. A lot of people are anxious to see that, especially because lawmakers are hoping to complete this special session in just one day. So that's a lot of work to do in a short amount of time. All right, Maggie, thank you.